Hello, hello and welcome back to Holopon Solo Sagas and today we will be playing our 14th episode of series 2 of Twilight 2000. We have been playing through, we haven't actually got very far at all in series two. Lots of things have happened. We've had quite a few encounters. We had our first car chase last episode that I really thought that worked fairly well. Uh, so we, where did we leave our team? We left our team. Oh, why don't we do this? Uh, uh, welcome back to subscribers. And if you haven't subscribed yet, do consider subscribing. I mean, you can wait, you can watch your halfway through, see if you fancy it, if you like it. Do you like the voice? Do you like the stories? There's plenty of backlog of other stories, but I'll probably, if I remember or don't remember, if not, I'll paste that little video that I've created uh, of me in the gray t-shirt saying do subscribe in the middle. But thank you very much uh, for subscribing and listening to the stories. And thank you very much to your contributions and your comments. And one of the comments that was made uh, just recently, now actually it was a while ago, but it's recently for me, uh, by Tracy, I'm going to be mentioning later on. Uh, in fact, I'll do it now. So what I was thinking is, uh, I was thinking what we were gonna do next, because what we did is we had the car chase and we left the team, as you can see in the maps here, the team is actually uh, probably somewhere around here, we can say, because they, they uh, lost their pursuers, which was the BTR and the Gaz. The Gaz, the other Gaz is left outside a rock law. Uh, they basically disabled one of the, the other Gaz uh, and they uh, made the BTR not want to follow any further. So I also did a role, which I didn't mention, for uh, Captain Jacob, and out of the six uh, drama clock, we have uh, two gone down, so there's four remaining. There's another way I read about doing it, using a dice pull, which I quite like, and I'm going to be doing that with Cyberpunk, but we'll continue with the clock for now. Uh, and we are heading up. So what I considered was we'd go to Trebinich, but that's gonna then be a bit uh, boring. So cycling back uh, to what uh, Tracy mentioned, which is the scenario sites. So within the referees book, they have a selection of scenario sites, uh, which are interesting places that your team, as a DM, as a GM, your team can go and explore. But, and Tracy suggested they're, they're good for solo play. And I had, had, had a bit, I've not really thoroughly read them before, and I was having a bit of read and I think they might work. So I think what we might do is we may say that we have one of those scenario sites somewhere around here. Uh, I've just thought that up just now because it's also, it's near here, it's around here and it's on the way across uh, to get across the barrier. Now the one I'm thinking of putting there is called the prison. If you have the box set, you can look it up. I'm thinking of putting the prison there because the prison, I only read the opening bit uh, at, at the moment with the prison, and it says that one of the rumors, because there's a list of rumors that Pete, they may have heard to get them there, is uh, an excellent military surgeon works at a former prison in the area. If someone is gravely wounded, she is their best hope. So I'm thinking we're going to return to Trebinitia. Trebinitia, uh, Doc is not going to be around and available. Uh, and we're gonna to be told that there is, they, they have heard rumors of a dock We hear is over this way, and then we'll start heading this way and we'll see if we can explore the prison site. It shouldn't take too long in the BTR. Also, another thing about the prison, which is in the rumors bit, uh, was uh, the prison makes enough alcohol from potatoes to produce copious amounts of fuel. It's advanced, I replaced copious. Uh, so I reckon somewhere around here, we will have that prison and we'll go there by going to Trebinitia. So, first off, we need to go to Trebinitia and then we need to see if Doc's there and we'll roll some stuff. But basically, I think we could we could probably, if you'll allow me to do this, I know Twilight 2000 doesn't normally do it, but we'll do, do with that, that we can say that the rest of, we can go through uh, the 17th of May, which is because we've still got the day shift because that was in the morning. We legged it in the morning. Uh, we can have the day shift, the evening shift, and the night shift. We'll just cursory go through, say we've gone to Trebinitia, and then uh, start doing our journey across to come to here, where we'll put the prison, and then we can explore the prison. 
which then gives us a nice thing that we've got this place over here that we could go back to to get fuel but we've now been converted to alcohol fuel so their diesel may not be useful we could come over here and explore this bit but if we roll for encounters as we travel then we can see what we do that's that's my idea to because uh, you know to to explore a solo site a, a scenario site and it might be interesting to go and explore one so first off we have the fact that we are on the day we are here we would then travel uh, for the today, we would move to Trebinitia and do an explore of Trebinitia. What we have so far with the team is most of the team are quite battered about and injured. Just to update you, we have uh, Jacob has taken five points of damage and has one health remaining. Toby, Toby Jones, uh, Jonesy, is actually quite, he's actually perfectly fine, he's just got a bit of stress. Uh, uh, Robert, the staff, staff sergeant, is on one damage. We've got Jack, who's on four damage, and he's still uh, got his uh, ruptured kidney, which he's recovering from. Uh, and we've got Jane, who is completely unconscious because she's on full uh, damage. She's got uh, her damaged leg brace. Uh, she's got a leg which is damaged in a brace, and she's got a snapped collarbone. We've also got uh, Jack, who's also got a dislocated elbow, uh, and I think someone else, oh yeah, and we've got Jacob uh, has a slashed forearm. Now, I don't think I was accommodating for the slashed forearm whilst Jacob was, was in that battle. Oh, minus two to, uh, to two-handed weapons. Well, I don't think the uh, Bushmaster probably counts as a two-handed weapon uh, whilst he was operating a Bushmaster with two-handed weapon with a fire control system. Probably not, but it will count for other stuff. So basically the team is in quite a lot of damage at the moment. They, they need to do some resting and, and recovery. So we will have, uh, oh yeah, and healing only occurs on, you heal one point for a full shift that you are resting or sleeping or doing nothing else apart from resting, then you heal one point for a full shift. So if you, theoretically, if you rested all day, you could heal four points. Uh, I believe that would be, be how it would be. Uh, so yeah, uh, further recovery. Once back on your feet, you will heal one point of remaining damage for each full shift spent resting or sleeping. See page 148. This assumes that you are not starving, dehydrated or hypothermic. You can heal damage and stress at the same time. And that is just hit points. That's not critical wounds. Critical wounds take the same time to heal, and if you have a, which is one day per whatever. And if you have a successful medical roll on that day, then it can heal two days in equivalent instead of one, but you have to be rested during that time. So during that time, you're resting. If you're not resting, then you're not healing. So Jane is resting because Jane is unconscious. Uh, staff is gonna keep watch. Staff's gonna pop his head out. Now he knows that Jane's okay. And we've got McCoy is also resting because McCoy is unconscious. Uh, he's keeping watch. Uh, Jack is going to rest. Toby is driving. Uh, Jacob is going to rest. So the three of them, one, two, three, four of them are going to try and resting, uh, which means that they'll heal hit points. I don't know whether Jane will come around. We'll do a, a, a roll to see if Jane comes around. Who was, who was? Toby's all right. Toby's driving. All right. So we've got a uh, staff is gonna keep watch. And this is, so what their plan is, is they are planning to drive to Trebinitia in this, this phase here. So this is, they're moving over to Trebinitia and we'll say that also, because it's not gonna take them long to drive there, that they will get to have an interaction with uh, the people in Trebinitia. For dead set shorts, Doc isn't there. Doc has gone off. Uh, to do rounds and to check on people in some of the other villages with that doctor who came over to Trebinitia to help. Uh, they're not very accepting at Trebinitia, so staff is going to have to roll some, uh, uh, what was it? It's not, yeah, it is persuasion, some persuasion. I was thinking of uh, manipulation, I'm thinking of aliens. Uh, it's staff is going to have to roll some persuasion rolls to try and talk them around into giving the information, and then that's where they'll have the rumours about that prison and then they can set off. So first, they need to get there. So we'll have Toby make a driving roll. Toby was make, oh, and staff will have said, because this is another thing that someone mentioned, I think it was Tracy as well. Staff would be going, uh, see, stick a geezer behind the wheel and you get some proper driving done, didn't you? Hey, 
that's the way we want it like toby lad you did some good old driving there uh and he would also be so i was thinking maybe he'd compliment jacob on his shooting but he doesn't really know about that all he knows about toby and toby's driving so toby has got a d10 uh for his agility and he's got a d10 for driving he needs to get at least one hit uh i believe it is at least one hit for there not to be some sort of uh, problem uh, and he gets a plus three because they're mainly driving on roads. So if those has got a D10, D10, it actually ends up being a D12, D12. Three hits. So they successfully get across and into uh, Trebinitia. Uh, next, we need to make sure that there's no problems on the roads. Uh, I think we're back on the D12, D12. Oh, what's the weather like? Oh, okay, <laughs> uh, it's overcast. So during the day, it's overcast. We've got staff. Uh, I think overcast would be minus one, but we normally, but I think with his, so staff is D12, D10, plus the binoculars makes it three, D12, D12 plus one. Minus one because of the overcast makes it D12, D12. Uh, we get three hits. So three hits is quite good. So they're driving cross country. Uh, no, they're driving across the roads and then they find the turn off to go into Trebinitia and they turn off to go to Trebinitia. During this shift, they get a... Uh, oh, outnumbered. Outnumbered, all right. So they've slowed down. Uh, the BTR in the background has sped up. So this is what... I, I, I'll tell you what, I'll read this because I was reading this uh, at, at, at earlier on about encounters. I, basically, I haven't read the... The referees manual in ages and as a, as a bit of advice to solo players if you read it re like a referees guide or the main rules of, of a game and you're not really relying upon them very much anymore as i'm not with twilight 2000 every now and then go back through and read through just skim read again because you'll pick up on some bits and you go oh i forgot all about that or you go oh i forgot didn't know i didn't realize that was it so what we've got here if we look at encounters Reoccurring encounters. Sooner or later, you will draw an encounter that you've already played before. When this happens, choose one of these options below. Continue the encounter. The characters meet the same people again. Change the encounter, face it again, or draw another card. So what we can have is, is that BTR uh, has followed. So we can say, so the BTR and the, the Gaz. So I think the Gaz, the BTR got down to two reliability. The Gaz is still up and running. So maybe, because the gas was slower, wasn't it? The back, gas is a 3-2. Maybe the gas with its people caught up. Now, I can't. I don't think anyone on the gas got taken out, but definitely people in the BTR got taken out. So maybe the gas has caught up. So as they're about to turn off and to go onto the, uh, they turn off and go on to the road towards Trebinitia. So basically they turn off of here to go up to Trebinitia, and then all of a sudden they can hear something behind them. Now, staff got three hits there, so they might be able to hear the gas coming up. Now, they are faster than the gas, so they might just bypass this. And so that whole thing that I was, <laughs> all that time I wasted, I've done this so many times with Twilight 2000. I come up with these great plans, and then we roll in the counter, and the plans go completely out the window, and we have to change what we do. So there's a gas coming up, now staff can hear it. Now, staff, so they've been just poofling along in the, the uh, Bradley uh, since they lost the BTR. They didn't realize that the gas was followed up. And I didn't realize that the gas was still on reliability five. And so obviously the officer in the BTR has told the driver in the gas, go chase them down. Because he turns, staff turns around and he sees coming over the crest of a hill in the distance, the gas, because he's got the binoculars, he can see it in the distance. And so we can say it's like, Actually, I don't think, I think if I read right, if I think I remember rightly about the uh, fire control system, it means that even extreme range counts as being close. Oh man, the airplanes. If you can hear that airplane going over, I do apologize, but I, I'm not gonna stop because otherwise I spend the whole time cutting out the sounds of the airplanes going over. It's like, you know, we can, we can take it as sound effects. Sorry, let me just check the fire control system. Right, fire control system. Uh, Fire control systems have the same effect. Additionally, remove all modifiers for range. All attacks with each weapon up to extreme range are resolved as if they were in short range. The Bushmaster on the Bradley has a range of 30 hexes. 
30 hexes is, well, what was it? This, if I remember rightly, uh, 67 maps was one of these hexes. One of these maps is, is 15 hexes. <laughs> Let me do some maths. So I think if I've worked out right, the, the Bushmaster could fire a total of eight of these combat hexes. Hold on, get the glare off the lights. Eight of these, uh, the Bushmaster could fire past eight of these. This is 15 hexes, the longest side, 15 hexes. Uh, 30 is its base, it can then do eight of those, I think is right. It's 120 hexes basically. So, heaps of distance. So what happens is, is staff is gonna say, <laughs> staff is gonna say, uh, Oi, we got that gas following us. Jacob lad, where are you? And Jacob will go, he speaks in a post accents, go, Oh, I'm resting. So Jacob was resting. So Jacob does not get to heal. Uh, so Jacob being resting is gonna is gonna is gonna complain. Jacob will come up. By that time, the BTR, the Bradley is still starting to put down distance because Toby did make his driving roll. So it wouldn't have closed much more. So it's still at that sort of range. So once it's at that like that sort of distance, have they seen have they seen them in time? because they might then stop or get out of the way. Otherwise, they can have a nice couple of rolls uh, and Jacob can try and basically kill the gas. Uh, let's say they've only got a Soviet soldier. They've got an intelligence of C, which is a D8, and they have recon of C, which is a D8. Uh, it's overcast, which is a minus one, uh, which will then give D8, D6. Uh, nothing, okay, no hits at all. So they don't see, so the uh, gas following up doesn't see the, the Bradley. So uh, Jacob is going to jump up onto the Bushmaster and he's going to attempt to stick some rounds down uh, completely with them being completely unaware that it's, it's coming. So the, the, beat, the Bradley stops, so it's no longer moving. Uh, let's see, if I remember rightly, it's not strength, it's agility which gives him a D10. He's got heavy weapons of a B, which is a D10. Range doesn't matter. Moving doesn't matter. It's moving, but it's got a minus one. But I'm gonna give Jacob a plus one because they don't know it's coming, which leaves him with his D10, D10. The Bushmaster has a rate of fire of four. He's gonna utilize the whole rate of fire because I remembered how rate of fire works this, this week. Uh, he's got 240 rounds left in the mag, uh, and I can't remember how many spare mags we said they've got. So, uh, Tobe, uh, Jacob is going to jump up onto the Bushmaster. Uh, we, oh, does he? No, it says minus two on with range combat, and uh, he's, he's not using range combat, he's using heavy weapons. Uh, and so, strictly speaking, it would be if he was firing his PKM, he would take the minus two. And Jacob is going to get a free round to fire some shots down on them. Maybe I'll give him two. Uh, this is against the front armor on the gas, which I've still got written down over here. Oh, man alive. All right. So he puts two, three. So he gets, so that's five damage as a base, six, seven, eight, nine damage on the gas, which has an armor of one but these are armor piercing rounds, and I can't remember what that does. Follow BT5, right five four, damage five, crit three, armor zero. Oh, so it doesn't affect armor. So there's no, no effect on armor as far as this is concerned. Okay, back to what I was saying, because I got myself distracted. So, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine points of damage. Hitting, it would have to hit the front armor, so hitting the front armor of the gas, which takes it down to one, which takes it down to an eight, which means we then roll on our vehicle combat to see where we hit, because we've penetrated the uh, hole and we've got an eight. Uh, sorry, so six, 12, uh, 15, 17 rounds fired. Uh, in a nine, which hits the commander. So uh, we will say, so what have we got? We got uh, eight points penetrating, uh, killing the commander. Uh, commander would, would get killed. 
Uh, we'll just say two points will go through doing that. Uh, it's 25 millimeter round. Uh, well, it's critted anyway. So the instant crit, so killing, we'll, we'll knock two points off because that's what we did beforehand. Going down to six. Uh, another round will kill the gunner. We'll kill another person going down to four. Uh, then we've got passenger, two. And then we've got the driver, all of those rounds. So basically, uh, it hits the back, goes across the front of the cab, going through uh, the driver, going through the uh, person, the commander, seat, whoever the senior is sitting next to the driver, going into the back, and we'll say it takes out four of the 10 men that were in there, being six remaining on his first burst. Uh, we will have they, they will make a driving roll to see if somebody can take control of the vehicle, which is a B and a C, which is a B and a C. If they get a hit, the vehicle stays on the road. Uh, two hits, all right, somebody leans over and takes control of the vehicle, that's pretty cool. Takes control of the vehicle, the vehicle dribbles a bit and we will, we will let uh, young Jacob uh, put another burst uh, across, so D10, 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 D10. Oh, it's wibbling, so that one for it moving, we'll, we'll take the one for it moving, which will make D10, D8, because it's now moving, and he's trying to track it down. Uh, one hit, uh, one, one hit, uh, he could push it. So this is gonna put uh, a, a, some damage onto it, uh, which it's got reliability still full, uh, and, but he's still got one hit, so he is gonna push this lot. Oh, smashing. <laughs> so, uh, he fires seven, eight, 14 rounds. Two, oh look, there was an armor rating column there, uh, which is uh, two rounds are, uh, so he's got 209 rounds left. They need to replace the towels. I reckon staff is gonna want, if that prison, has got the ability to get heavy weapon stuff as well. Staff's gonna to wanna to go there because they've got to replace the TOWs, the towels on this Bradley after them facing down the other stuff. Uh, two hits with five, six, seven points. Uh, six points because of the armor hitting in the one, that's the fuel. Uh, if the attack flings one point of damage or more, the tank will leak, maximum fuel capacity. Any excess damage into other components. So this is uh, one is fuel. Well, fuel fuel can't hit any other components because fuel is the last component in the, the order. It's not from an explosive attack. So we will say, oh, I don't know. So it goes, uh, inflicts one point of damage or more. So that was six. So what was that, that's five. Yeah, so that's six, which means that it goes to five and then we'll roll again. Uh, an eight uh, gunner, so we've got, uh, so that's five going down, uh, so two, 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 so that's another three people get killed as well. So the fuel is gone, another two, three people get killed, so half the people, basically I'm gonna say that vehicle is out, <laughs> out of order. Uh, Jacob has uh, put rounds into it, uh, he has, I'm gonna give him, he's gonna have some extra XP for that. Let's give him some XP. Uh, he has put the, that, that gas on the side, off the side of the road. They will head in to uh, Trebonitia. Uh, Trebonitia has heard all the shots going from, from like down the road. Uh, they're gonna be quite interested to know what was going on. So we will have that evening shift. They're probably gonna be talking then and then be sent off. But we're gonna let, so Jacob doesn't recover, no. Jack can heal one hit point. Jane can heal one hit point, but we'll say that Jane is still unconscious. Staff, staff is going to attempt to, we'll have a staff attempt to talk to the person who is in charge of the civilian who is in charge. Uh, he is going to attempt to persuade her to give, because remember it was uh, she was the boss of uh, Trebonitia, he's gonna attempt to persuade her that, that they need help. At, oh, he's not very good at this. 
uh, with a d6. Now, who's is anyone better at persuading? I don't think anyone. So d8, d6 is Jacob. Oh, Jacob might do because Jacob speaks Polish. There might be, and he's got Jack's got d8, d6, but Jack's is not. Jack is not in the way, in the mood. So Jacob is going to try, and Staff is going to try and assist. I think it just means that he gets a plus one. Yeah, plus one to maximum or plus three. So staff's gonna go up and staff's gonna help Jacob. As staff's doing that, uh, no, we haven't got time for that bit. I was gonna make, make Toby fix up because the the Bushmaster has just gone reliability to four and that's been really useful to them at the moment. So anyway, so staff is gonna go over with Jacob. They're both gonna jump out of the Bradley. They're looking a bit sweaty and a bit flustered. They're gonna start talking to the boss who I can't remember her name. Oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, and so uh, they're gonna try talking to her and find out where Doc is and see if they can get any information. If they get a hit, uh, they will be able to find out the information about the prison. If they don't get a hit, I will think on my feet and we'll try and do something else. So this is still in the day shift. It's overcast, it's not started raining yet. They've just put down those gas, so maybe they can Maybe if they, oh, let's roll it. So they're going over, they're talking, they're not gonna give any offers or anything, but they might have to do some bribing if they don't get hits, they get one hit. All right, so uh, she isn't happy to see them coming back because they left uh, under a bit of a cloud about a week ago, six six days ago, about a week ago. So she's surprised to see them back so, far, so quickly. Yeah, about a week ago, I think it was the 11th of May that they left. So about a week ago, she's surprised to see them back so quickly and wondering why they've come back. Uh, and so she's like, why are you back? Like, I thought you didn't want anything to do with us. And she can see that like Jacob's arm has been bleeding. He's got a big gash across his arm and it's all bandaged up and there's blood over there. Staff looks knackered and he's tired and they're sweaty from basically the, the chase and the combat. And Staff will be covered in blood from trying to fix up Jane and fix up McCoy. Uh, Jacob would be leaning out of the, so Jacob's all bust up. Uh, Jack's like looking pale and haggard, uh, Jane is unconscious, uh, and they've remembered Jane because of the leg brace, so they would basically be saying, oh, okay, so so she's all right, you don't look that good, what's going on? So staff is gonna recount that they bumped into this, uh, the marauders that have been hitting them, so, oh, the marauders. So she wanted them to deal with the marauders that were coming up. He's gonna tell the story of uh, Rocklaw, so she has she heard of Rocklaw? Let's put Outnumbered back in the stack. So I, I think I think we've dealt with the Outnumbered card. If we get Outnumbered again, it's gonna be a different patrol. Uh, has she heard of Rocklaw? Reds is yes. Reds, yes. So she's heard of Rocklaw. She knows that they're, they're doing it rough. He's gonna tell the story about uh, Maria and Anna, uh, and he's gonna tell the story about trying to get the, about the children that they found, and they're now at Rocklaw and about Rocklaw was under having pressure, and then, then you tell a story about uh, the town, which is further up, uh, which she'll, she'll probably have heard of. Uh, what was that one? This one up here with the fuel. Zygrod, I can't say it. I'm learning Dutch, can't do Polish. Uh, I can't do everything. Uh, my Italian failed, so now I'm switching uh, to Dutch, because Mandy's, Mandy's Dutch, so uh, she speaks Dutch. Uh, and so, but I can't do Polish. So he tells the story of uh, that place and how they had employed them for fuel, but now they don't need the fuel, but they could go back and get it for them at Rocklaw if they need it. And she's gonna say, look, particularly once she finds out that they dealt with, potentially dealt with, she doesn't know if the same marauders. He's gonna say, they're wearing US uniforms. Is it the same marauders or are there other marauders that they need to deal with? Uh, Reds is the same marauders. Hearts, reds, it was the same marauders. All right, so she's she's chuffed that it's the same marauders. She's really quite uh, impressed with them. She's she's sort of, it's twisted her mood from being a bit aggressive and not really wanting them to, to help them to be more helpful. But like we said, Doc and that medical bloke have gone off and they are doing, uh, they are doing the rounds uh, and they're not here to help and they look like they need help. So she's gonna say, well, there is the prison. Now, not only does the prison, as far as we're aware, let me do it, let me see, as that aeroplane goes over, let me see if the prison has weapons. Without reading too, if I, 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 the only way to know is to read too much, and I don't want to do that, because that spoils the whole solo play. All right, so, 
is she gonna say so he's gonna mention like they're short on because of the battle with the the tank that, that defending uh trebinitia the battle of trebinitia end of series one why don't you check it out i'll put a link up there battle of trebinitia so is she gonna say they've got weapons uh reds yes no so she doesn't know if they've got heavy weapons they doesn't know if they've got ordnance there but there is a lot of people there it's a prison she's heard that they've got like a military doctor there she knows that they produce fuel there she wouldn't be surprised but she can't guarantee it she is going to say about the fuel and she is going to say about the doctor staff's going to go oh man mate are you saying that we've got a trog our way over there then she's going to go yes there's nothing here like we can look after you here you can rest here but that we don't know when uh, the doctors are going to be returning around this way they've gone off to help other people in the area that's what they that's what they do like they don't stay stationary for very long it's like, oh bloody can you not send word for him love uh if he can get if he can get uh i'm gonna i'm gonna say that is gonna knock down to 2d8 because he had the d10 d8 if he can oh no he hasn't has he he's got a d8 d6 so got a D8, D6. If he can get, so he's just playing. If he can get a hit for this, then she'll consider, and then we'll see how many days it'll take. A hit, all right. So she's going to say, oh, look, I, I can send him off, but we still haven't got fuel for you, and they do at the prison. That's a military doctor at the prison who can help, and they're there, definitely. It's not going to take you long to get there. She'll draw them like a little map and say, look, how long is it going to take you to get from here to here? How long is it going to take? This travels at, what is it? What, what is the travel for this? The Bradley travels 9.10. Combat speed 5.4. So combat speed is on the combat map. Uh, travel speed 9.10. So the Bradley can travel, oh, 5.4. I was looking at the wrong ones for these. Oh no, that's because we were on the small map, weren't we? So in a shift, it can travel nine of these. So it can go from there to there in a shift, as long as he makes a roll, it can actually get across. So she's like, you can be there by tonight if you set off now to where the prison is. It's clear as day, it's here. But I don't know when we'll be able to get them back. I can drive, I can send some runners out to try and find them, but I don't know where. So basically, you know, we're trying to convince staff so let's make staff make an intelligence role the intelligence bit i think would be uh to so has he got i'm gonna make him make an intelligence empathy so a d12 and a d8 if he gets a hit on either of these he's gonna think moving to the prison is the safest and most sense he's got two hits that's on intelligence so he's gonna go all right all right all right all right we can be there and we can get set up and we can find out what they do there. All right, what, what, what else can you tell me about this place? If he can make another persuasion roll, she will give him another clue. Oh, that's wrong. It's a D6. No, but he did get one hit on the empathy. So she is also going to say, so what will be told them, rumours wise? Uh, we've gone, excellent doctor. We've said prison with alcohol. What else we've got? I don't like <laughs> uh, all right, so she's going to say, okay, here's going to be interesting. She's going to look, this is just a rumour, but apparently there is one of you lot there. What do you mean one of us lot, love? Good old British troopers. No, US. I'm not an American, love. These ones are. And Jacob's going to go, I'm not, I'm Polish. Uh... It's, anyway, there's apparently there's like some form of intelligence agent there, uh, and he took refuge. And, and apparently there's some there's some talk there's some talk of some technology. I don't know. I'm not too sure. It's just a rumor. And he did get hit. Uh, and it does say here rumors. And so, all right, all right. And I guess we're going to get into prison. I have no idea why we'd want to do that. All right then. Let's head off. So uh, let's think. Do they, what are they gonna wanna, do they wanna get, is there anything they need? Maybe they can try and get some food. What have they got? I don't think they've got much that they can trade. Uh, Cause they gave all the weapons to, to Rocklaw. 
What trading they were going to have to do, they legged it, so they left loads of stuff behind. So basically, they've got what they've got on them. They're down to, they really need more stuff. Maybe the prison is going to have stuff. I mean, because otherwise, I was even thinking, I was thinking, well, what was it? I think it was, it was last week on my walk to work. I was thinking, uh, maybe they're even going to have to try and hit an, uh, an ammo depot because they're going to run out of ammunition. They've got no heavy weapons. They really need some heavy ordnance if we're going to start throwing. There's a T-72. They know there's a T-72 wandering around. They also know Captain Jacob's got a T-72. They are not equipped to take out a T-72 at the moment. They really need to get some heavy ordnance to, to protect themselves if they're going to keep heading west because they're starting to hit some bigger things. Uh, and talking about heading west, actually, I will, I will, I will, I will segue in there. Uh, if anybody can say anything, I think I mentioned this last session, if anyone can say anything about Dark Waters and how that map lays out, I'm very interested to find out because I think if we're going to keep this going past this series, we're going to need an extra map. We're going to need Dark Waters. So the additional uh, encounter cards might be handy and the map might be handy, so that might be. And whilst I'm segueing in here, I will then say again, hello, uh, if you've not considered subscribing, can I suggest you consider subscribing? If you've liked the, the discussions that I'm doing and thinking about the story and how the story goes and how I use the tools, do consider subscribing. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit more structured than this is. Uh, and uh, that would be really cool. Also, if you'd like to support further, if you're already a subscriber and you'd like to support further or if you're not subscribed yet, there is also uh, a membership that you can join uh, and those people's names will go at the top who have joined. We've called it the Adventures Guild. Uh, I can't remember how that name came up. Uh, but if you'd like to join and it supports and then it will help with things such as buying uh, Dark Waters uh, to, to allow this to continue past that part. Uh, if we ever even get close to the map. Though, if we do find this prison, pr prison, prism, uh, it is getting only a few hexes that we're gonna have to come around this way to the edge of the map. And as we are on episode 14, it is getting close to the 20 where I normally stop and then get bored and wanna move on to something else. But if you'd like to subscribe, I'll put that down there again. Thank you very much for subscribing. And if you'd like to join, there's a join. You can also give uh, their super thanks. There's a little button for doing super thanks if you'd like to do that. And that can go towards helping buy additional supplements. Uh, or there's coffee thank yous also down there as well. Anyway, thank you very much for that. Let's get going. So, staff is going to tell them all to bundle in. Jacob is prob no, Toby is probably going to go out and start getting his tools out. And he's going to say, uh, no, hold on. Can I not just, can I not, like, we need to do some servicing. The, 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 the M240 needs servicing, uh, the, the Bushmaster needs servicing. I've got to do some servicing. And staff's going to be, look, fella, we have not got time for that. I don't know if you've seen everybody else, fella. You may have been sitting behind that wheel, but everyone else has got pinged and dinged like anyone's business, mate. All the rest of the crew is dinged to all by me. McCoy, I've just saved McCoy's life, mate. He needs a doctor. He's on the floor bleeding his poor little puppy guts out. This is not sit around, fix our guns time. This is get on the road and get to the doctor time. So, get behind the wheel, fella, and let's set off. We need to be there by tonight, or I don't know what happens next. We're running short on everything. We need some help. Uh, so, <laughs> we'll take it that that persuades Toby to get behind the wheel. So for the day evening, let's roll uh, weather again. Uh, still overcast. We'll do Jane is resting. Jane's still unconscious. Uh, staff will keep watch again. McCoy will whinny uh, or whimper. Let's see, Jack is going to rest because Jack was a uh, Toby, he's driving. Uh, Jacob would like to rest. Jacob's gonna rest. Jacob's gonna see if he can get some rest and actually get some healing done this time. So. We are planning to head. We will bypass, unless we want to go back, we could always, no. They're not gonna to want to go back to that gas. They could go back to that gas and like see if anyone's still there. I mean, oh. Nah, staff's not gonna, it's like, staff's just gonna to want to head over here. So we've got over here. We do have this thing here, which is on the way. All right, I've got a feeling. So there we got, we can do eight. So we can go one, two, uh, so one, two. 
hold on, we've got, uh, let me check. So it means going cross country, so his driving role is not gonna be as good. What, what are we moving through? Can you see this? So we are going, we've come around this way because it comes into here quite long. So we've got roads, that's fine. That's normal speed. Then we've got cross country, open, that's fine, normal speed. We're gonna have to go through some wooded areas, which is half speed. So we've got uh, one, two, three, four. So three, four puts us there, and we have a, a driving roll, which I'm gonna say is minus one, which gets us here. So this is what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna stop off here and have a look at this. Oh, do we just go? We could go straight to the prison and then we could do a recce out afterwards. Oh, if I only had other people here. <laughs> No, we're in no, if this has got, if this has got anything, we're in no position. So we're gonna go, all right, we will go. Oh, and it's evening shift, which means we need to get there by night. Right, so we've got one, two, let's call that three, four, five, six. So that is full, full range. Uh, and we're gonna have a straight roll, a driving roll, because we're going through wooded areas and we're gonna go through plain area and we're going through so we've got open plains, so you can imagine coming off road and then he's going through some farmer's fields, through, through some farmer's fields, through the walls. They're all a bit overgrown because uh, it's been it's been rainy, so the ground's a bit wet and damp and it was through pitted. Uh, there's not many crops left because of uh, the war and there's not many people farming this area anymore. And it's also, this is apocalyptic, basically the war's been raging for ages across this area. And then we're coming over here, then we've got a wooded area. There's maybe there's been a tank battle going on uh, and various other things, particularly because of what was occurring if the prison is here. Uh, so he's having to basically avoid wreckage, avoid some uh, hulls and some hulks that are in the way to get to the prison, which is here. So we'll have a roll for Toby. Uh, and there is a probability that Toby, so we'll say that pluses and minuses up and down, that it's a straight roll. Uh, driving D10, D10. He needs at least a hit. No hits, so he will push. He needs at least a hit, he's getting stressed now. Oh, nice push. So it gets there and he's all nice going across, but now, does anything happen when they're driving cross country? So what do we have? Driving, we had uh, two hits. Now, staff is D12, D10 normally. It's overcast, so that goes down to D12, D12, because with his binoculars. So staff's got his head up, and he's, oh, and he's just driving along, I should have took that off. So it's, I think because they're driving, it goes down to D10, D10. Uh, one hit. Okay, let's have a lovely little encounter as we're driving along, see what happens. So, encounter, we have uh, seven of clubs, hungry and angry. Group of refugees, starving and hypothermic. Some of clubs, okay, so we're, so this is uh, off-road, so it's two times, so there's about 10 refugees coming along. Uh, staff's gonna, staff's heads out, staff, so that's seven of clubs. Uh, staff is going to try and earn some karma brownie points. His persuade is a D, which is a D6. He's got 11 hit experience points. I'm gonna spend 10 experience points, because I think it's 10 to go to uh, a, a, from a D to a C. He's gonna spend 10 experience points and take his C, uh, his D to a C, giving him a D8, D8. So staff is going to, uh, Jacob again, is gonna assist, speaking Polish, but so, so giving staff Instead of a D8, D8, he's gonna get a D8, D10 uh, because the persuade, he goes up by one. So D8, D8 plus one, D8, D10. So Staff's gonna lean out and he's gonna shout down to these lot. <laughs> I'm not gonna say he's gonna, he's gonna be quite kind. They're not gonna say, look, look, mate, we ain't got any food, all right? We are off cross country. Get out of the bleeding way. If you want help, there's a place called Rocklaw, all right? I'll show you on the map where to get there, you get down there and they will help you. You best be ready to work though, lad. Do you understand me? You best be ready to work and they can help you. There's also a place apparently further down, uh, uh, some free free place, free crack, free for crack out or something. Head down that way. 
but stop off at Rucklow and help them out, all right? They're trying to rebuild it. Go down there. We can't help you, all right? We've got a job to do. We can't help you. Ah, nice. He got hit. So he found it quite stressful. He doesn't get a stress point. He, he got hit. So they're like, all right, fair enough, because he got his persuade roll, and they will head down. Uh, so they're aggressive and demand food and shelter. I can't help you, mate. It'll persuade them uh, to just go down without having to resort to violence. And they will head down towards Rocklaw. Now, at this point, we are at the end of the evening, coming into the day shift, coming to the night shift, and we will have the uh, so Toby driving the, uh, so that says Jeep, that, that we'll call that the Bradley, uh, has come to the prison. The prison. So, the prison looks, uh, off a long, I will read this, uh, after a long broken uh, ribbon of highway, concrete stands a mid-60s built prison surrounded by surprisingly well-tended fields. Its guard towers are topped with machine gun emplacements, its sally ports closed and locked. Behind tiers of riser wire, tall crops grow, and above the main entrance is a giant crucifix made of eye beams wielded together. To your relief, no one hangs upon it, but a look through your binoculars reveals what appears to be shackles amongst the spreading rust. They shine as if taken care of. All right, so it is, let's just see if I can find, because so there's a map for it and everything. I think this is it. There's less of a shine on it. Yes, so it is a large area. So there we go, that works without the shine. So it, unless this green reacts with the background screen. Uh, it is a large area, there we go. It is a large area map and we are approaching it and we will circle around and try approaching it from the front side over here. Uh, as we approach, we will roll. What are we gonna roll? So we've done a bit of an investigation. So he's had a bit of a look. He's seen it. He will approach the front. Now, I haven't read this. So what I will do is we will be ending soon and I'll read this properly uh, because we've got here. Uh, and I never knew if we were gonna get here or not. So this is at the night. We've approached it, so we've got the day. So this is what we're gonna do for night shift. So we've got to work out what we're doing for night shift. So as we come in, uh, we don't. I don't wanna read the situation at the moment. There's a bit called arrival. So they pull up to the gates. It's now gonna be the, so that was the evening shift. So the sun's going down, it's dark, it's late. They're tired, they've been traveling all day. They wanna stop. They reach the doors. So spotlights from the top shine down upon them. So there's two spotlights. There's spotlights in the, the, the guard towers, which are around the corners. So as they're approaching the gates, they've got two towers here where they can clearly see. There's a bit at the top here and a spotlight at the top shines down as they drive down this area, which is all being cleared out. So obviously there's killing zones, protecting killing zones around. Uh, and we've got that big cross, which is hanging with some shiny shackles, which are hanging on the big crucifix at the top. So based on what I can read from here, just glance and read and I'll have to read it for us later. As they approach the front, the spotlights will shine and the someone will shout down for them to stop and they're shouting in Polish. And so Jacob will then translate and say, look, they're telling us to stop. So staff will tell, all right, Tobes, foot down, mate, break it up, stop. Uh, staff will get to the top and shout, and when you, and you geezers speak English. Uh, and they will. Uh, so someone will come out the front gate. The brother or sister who greets them runs down. Okay, so someone comes out the front gate to greet them. What are they dressed in? How's these brothers and sisters dressed? All right, so if they're gonna come out wearing prison garb, uh, but maybe, maybe, maybe you'll be car maybe carrying a Bible. So come out, because for, uh, prison garb, carrying a Bible, head shaved, uh, we'll call it, we'll say it's a, it's a female prisoner coming out, I wonder if, did, did they used to have meat? Nah, they wouldn't have. Oh, maybe they've had feet, well, so maybe it's clothing that they've worn since coming in. Uh, we're carrying a Bible. They will step in, step out, and they're flanked. Okay, they will be flanked by, uh, by a Polish soldier on one side, and what looks like a Russian, someone wearing a Russian uniform, on the other side, a woman wearing a Russian uniform on the other side, who's one of the N named NPCs. Okay, so she, she doesn't wear a uniform. She wears normal clothing. Yes, okay, she comes out. 
she is carrying an AK-47, AK-74 rather, and there is a standard soldier, Polish soldier, uh, also carrying an AK-74. They're flanking this person who is the, the sister who welcomes them. Hello, I am Sister Maria. I speak English. So I have been suggested that I come out and meet you. Uh, can I ask what you would like? Uh, staff is gonna tell them uh, that they've got some really injured people and apparently they've got someone who's uh, a doctor. Let's see if I can find whether they've got medical place in here. Yes, they do. They have, they have a very good doctor here. Intelligence A, medical aid A. Yes, we do. We have an incredibly good doctor. Uh, we have, oh, can I just miss their name? Dr. Guerin. Dr. Guerin is here and Dr. Guerin is Dr. Guerin. Uh, her, eventually her. She, she's a fantastic doctor. She should be able to help you. And how did you get injured? Oh, we got ambushed by some marauders. Now, it's very important that you understand that we do not allow weapons within the, the prison. Uh, Rasputin will not allow it. Uh, now, what else did she say? This is gonna be really cut up because I'm reading as I'm talking. Uh, Rasputin is, who's Rasputin? Rasputin is our leader. Rasputin is the Messiah who leads us. Let's see, what's it say? Uh, Rasputin, uh, brother or sister who greets him, run down the holy mandate, essentially recanting how Rasputin received a vision from God and brought redemption to the prison. Now, Rasputin's pr punishment, if you decide to break any of the 10 commandments, is harsh. And she'll point up to the, the cross and the chains, which is hanging up on the crucifix. Now, this is if you choose to slip into the old ways. The new ways that we are following means that everybody here is welcome. This is a place of peace and we intend to keep it that way. We live by the commandments and people will die by those commandments. If you are willing to follow this rule, then Dr. Guerin would be more than happy to help you and you are more than welcome to enter our sanctuary to trade and to get rest and to recover from your, your injuries. Uh, Staff's gonna go, uh, when you say trade, what sort of stuff you got to trade then? Well, we have food and we have fuel and we have other items. You got weapons? Well, no, that's one of the things that we do not trade in. We do not trade in weapons. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is at this point, that's what they're gonna say. And then I'll read, read through in detail and find out if they do or don't. Uh, all right, well, I ain't got much choice, have we? Because it's getting dark. All right, so you're gonna look after our stuff then. It says here, it says here, if PCs can store their weapons with the guards, but they likely want to keep them under guard themselves. All right then, so what we might do then, uh, Toby, mate, you want to look after everything, didn't you? Well, I'd rather not go in there. I'd rather stay with the Bradley, because you're not gonna let the Bradley in, are you? No, I'm afraid we won't. But you can park out up, and then she'll point to this bit over here. You can park there. Uh, the guards will keep you covered and you will be under our protection, but you will not be allowed in with the weapons. I'm very, very sorry. I, I don't mind staying with this. I don't mind staying with this, the, with the Bradley chief. I'm happy you're out here. And, and Jacob is gonna say to Toby, do you mind if I, like, I've been, I'm, I, I need someone to stitch this up. It's still bleeding. Toby's, no, no, mate, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You can come out. Once you've got seen by the doctor, you can come out, you can stay with me. Uh, I mean, if you can find, you find any chocolate in there or co fresh coffee, bring it out. But otherwise, I'm gonna fix stuff up. I'll just be here. I'll be fine. All right, if you're sure, mate. If you're sure, all right. So they'll, they will strip all their weapons off. Is staff gonna try and get, try, staff gonna try and sneakily try and slip a knife? Are they gonna have knives? I guess not. They're not anything that's an offensive weapon. It's gonna be like living in New South Wales. So I don't think they're gonna be allowed anything through. Is any of them going to try and slip stuff through? So the only person who might try is staff. Jacob might not be worried. Uh, Jack, his kidneys hurt, and Jane is asleep. But if she found out that, that she went in without weapons, she would be absolutely fuming. So staff is going to make an intelligence roll. If he fails, he's going to try and slip something in, and then we'll give him a roll to see if he gets it success. He succeeds. He is not thick enough to try and cause any problems at the moment. Uh, so they are gonna leave all their weapons behind and we will say they've gone into the prison. Uh, we will end this session saying that we are going to uh, send uh, Jane, Jack and 
Jacob have gone to the doctor. Uh, oh, with McCoy. They're gonna be quite, so I think uh, they're gonna be quite happy with the fact that staff is quite eager that the McCoy is seen and he's really, really important. And then staff is gonna try and find, his staff is gonna have a look around. Oh, let's, write, let's write myself some notes for next get, next session. So, staff's gonna have a look around and find somewhere where he can get some kip. Toby is gonna be outside doing repairs. The, well, Toby's gonna sleep actually, because it was, it's the night shift, but we'll say that they've slept and everything at this stage, and we'll start a new day on the 18th of May. Uh, and the rest have all gone to the doctors. And that is where we will end this session. Uh, and next session, we will explore the prison and find out what happens uh, for in session 15. Thank you very much for following through. Uh, thank you for uh, being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much to the Adventures Guild for joining the membership, join, uh, and for all of your support. Uh, and I hope you have a good week of gaming. Enjoy all the solo gaming, be as creative as you can be. Uh, stay, stay creative. Enjoy. See ya.